Hey, thanks for joining me today. You're listening to The Sit Down with Roman Gray. All right, testing, testing. One, two, three. Hey, everyone. It's uh, It's been a while since you last heard from me. Man, this year has been crazy. There has been so much going on, and I really wish I could catch you all up on it. But um, that's a topic for another day. I really did miss you guys. I really missed sharing my thoughts with you and feeling like I had someone who I could relate with. So uh, I hope you guys are doing okay. And uh, you know, today I want to talk about something that's been in my mind for a long time now, but it recently has come up again. And I finally had some time to write on it and reflect on it. So I hope you guys can relate. Today I want to talk about self-worth. For the longest time, I was feeling lost. So I went in search of something more. I've been so tired of feeling afraid, exhausted from all the lies I told myself that I thought kept me safe. I was in search of adventure and something different, something special, something exhilarating, all while running away from a hurtful past, hesitant to love, escaping the image of a man that I just can't seem to fulfill. You know, I'm I'm no different than you guys. You know, I wish just like you. I wish to be different. I wish to be spectacular and awe-inspiring. I wish to be accepted in all my weirdness and to be loved with no ceiling. I I dream of the days when I get to be kissed by a foreign son with memories that graze the idea of what it means to feel lost in eternity. I mean, it'd be nice if one day I no longer have to wish. Even even with all these things that I've learned about myself and human nature and just the absurdity of existing, there's still a major problem that keeps coming up for me. And if you've guessed it by now, it's self-worth. And that eventually becomes a problem when I try to accept love. For those who don't know, I have an extreme lack of self-worth. I don't know how to gain a sense of worth and value from something that isn't external. And it makes sense. You know, for my whole life, I've managed to only be validated by other things. And that's made it hard for me to understand and gain self-worth from within myself. My value was validated by romantic love, work achievements, social popularity, productivity, and and even petty things like jealousy and admiration from others. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy, isn't it? Like it's it is wild the fact that we basically spend our whole lives working so hard to prove our worth in order to be paid. I mean, our worth is deemed by other people and based on their perception, dictates how much we are worth in the form of dollars. I mean, we we have really been putting a value on human beings. But does that mean the same thing as putting a price tag on a soul? When I took a step back and removed myself from all these things going on, right? And I removed all these other things going on. I removed all that from the equation. I came to the sad truth that I have no internal compass when it comes to my worth. Relationships have been really hard for me because of my lack of self-worth. I can't accept compliments or cute remarks about myself. I don't believe that someone can truly love me for me unless I have something to offer. After a while, I mean, I just, I begin to feel like a monster because I don't seem to know anybody who feels like this or who has this issue. Being asked what's wrong with you instead of what happened is something that just stings more as time moves on. And then for those who don't know in person, I can be sometimes a bit abrasive, but I know that my abrasiveness at times stems from my discomfort with myself, or maybe the hatred I have for myself. 
part of me doesn't want to remember certain things. You know, part of me doesn't want to remember the pain. Part of me forgets about the love that winds down over time. This life, it just, it keeps moving at such a pace that it's hard to fully fathom. I mean, the longer I live, the more these years become smaller and smaller parts of my life. I've been chasing experiences, but what if even that is me just running away into escapism? Or just me running away into my own form of perfection? You know, what if that's me just running away into my idealized idea of life? It makes me realize that I'm still so immature in so many ways. You know, I still want things to be a certain way and I want myself to be a certain type of person. That thinking takes me away from the thoughts of today and from that I end up creating my own little form of hell where I just make myself miserable by constantly comparing and wishing things were another way than accepting what it is right now. And maybe that's why I can't really sleep much anymore. Maybe that's why it's hard for me to relax. There's this constant discontent in me that's always looming over everything I do. Maybe it's why I can't seem to ever truly be happy. It's it's probably why I don't like to celebrate my birthday or just be celebrated in general. This whole thing, you know, self-worth, it's been the biggest issue of mine since I could remember. As with a lot of things, you know, I thought that this was something that I would have conquered by now. But its presence, it it just makes itself known more and more as I get older. As I continue to try and find love and fulfillment and peace of mind. Sometimes I wish I could just capture confidence in a jar like fireflies on a summer night i mean i just thinking about all this i mean i can't help but wonder you know am i wasting a partner's love if i don't have self-worth because a partner's love can only be fully appreciated and accepted in its entirety when you feel their love or let me let me say that again a partner's love can only be fully appreciated When you feel their love in their entirety. And if I'm too busy, you know, hating myself to feel their love in their entirety, then am I wasting their love? Because I should be able to appreciate their love and accept it right now, not just when it's gone. You know, if I'm difficult to love over and over again, then do I not deserve love until I know how to love myself? Once I discover true self-worth, will success no longer matter? Since success exists by comparison, and if I'm content with who I am, then I won't need to compare myself. Sometimes I wonder if I created this person with these issues because I was someone who couldn't feel certain things, and so that this person I created, I used him to feel bad and to run away from myself and harsh truths. I refuse parts of myself for so long, and <laughs> I really wish I had an answer to this problem of mine, but honestly, I, I don't have an answer. I don't have a solution to this right now other than time. I guess that, that old saying really holds up, you know, that time heals all wounds, because right now, from what I can tell, only it's only with time and more life experiences and, and deeper conversations will this all get better for me. <laughs> it, it sounds kind of fucked up, but sometimes... I actually really enjoy feeling like this because it reminds me how fragile I am and how imperfect I am and how much there is to me that is still yet to grow. It reminds me just how human I am and in some sort of messed up way, it it makes me excited. I'm not too sure how I want to end this podcast, but uh, here's here's a thought I want to leave you with. You know, life is filled with beautiful things, but what happens when we create a presence or system that does nothing but glorify those perfect moments? Of what good are we if we glorify only pretty moments and shy away from everything else? 
do we become a generation that predicates itself only on feeling good? Maybe we only end up living for the picture-perfect moment and then just spend the rest of our time sitting in idle busyness in hopes to be captured in a moment that makes it look like our life is a movie. But I bet that most of us, I bet that most of us are like that sailor lost at sea or the woman who dreams endlessly or the man who's afraid of feelings or the woman who's afraid of being alone. We are all so vulnerably human. What does it mean to catch a glimpse of perfection when our lives are everything but perfect?